Happy Sunday and good morning, kids and families. I hope you are having a wonderful Sunday morning so far. My name is Dominique Lawley, and I am so excited to share some fun announcements that we have for you and your families this morning. I am happy to announce with you that we have reopened our adult services as well as our children's ministry department. Now, due to the new California state guidelines, we are unable to hold worship services inside, but we are legally allowed to do church outside. Our new outdoor service times will be 8 o'clock a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m on Sunday mornings located on the South Lawn. Our first Sunday back was last week and we had such a blast hanging out with all of your kiddos outside. Our goal for Sunday school has always been to lead kids into growing relationships with Jesus Christ. And thankfully, we will still be able to do that together only outside. All kids ages two years old through sixth grade can come to church with their parents and check into Northwest Kids Park for either service. It's right near the South Lawn. We will have two different age group areas, one for elementary and one for two-year-olds through kindergarten. We'll be taking the same safety protocols as we did last time when we held worship services inside, which means we'll continue health screening before the kids are checked in. Every child's temperature will be taken. We will ask you a few health screenings screening questions, and we will continue requiring masks to be worn. Every staff member and volunteer on campus are required to wear their mask on Sunday mornings. I know things will continue to look different in Northwest Kids Park for a little while, so thank you in advance for your cooperation as we open our children's ministry department on Sunday mornings again. Now, if you and your family choose to do church at home, we will still continue to provide our Sunday videos for you. My hope is that whether you come to church in person or whether you choose to stay home, we can still worship the same God no matter where we are. My second announcement is that Zoom Hangouts are happening this week. Now, every other week, we gather together with all of our Northwest Kids Park kids on Zoom. We review the past Sunday lessons. We go over the memory verse. And most of all, we play some fun games together. You will be re receiving an email from your children's ministry coordinator this week. Our fourth through sixth graders will be meeting on Monday, August 10th at 4 p.m. Our first through third grade will be meeting on Tuesday, August 11th at 4 p.m. And then all of our preschoolers and kindergartners will be meeting on Wednesday, August 12th at 10 a.m. on Zoom. And last but not least, our twos and threes will be meeting on Thursday, August 13th at 10 a.m. We hope to see you and your kids this week. Now, don't forget to head to our website at nwc.org to find this week's crafts and activities. We have an activity all about creativity. We have this fun coloring page as well as this month's memory verse decoder. Now let's stand up and get ready for some fun worship. Everything I want, everything I need, you are.
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. started with our Bible story for today. Before we get started, I would encourage you to go ahead and grab your Bibles because we are going to be in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 today. Now, if you remember, last week we started a brand new life app for the month of August, which is called Creativity. Everyone say that. Awesome. Now, creativity is imagining what you can do because we're created in God's image. And if you listened to us last week, you know that we were created in God's image. All of us humans, all of us people, we were made to be like God, to love like God. And so if you remember, we learned that God is pretty creative. All of the sun and the moon and the stars that he made, even the land, the darkness, and even the light. The sky that he made, the plants and the trees. Now even the land animals, the sea animals, all of the animals that fly in the sky, God made that. And it shows us how creative he is because look at the animals around us. They, they're different they look different, they talk different, they even act different, they eat different things. And lastly, we learned that he made you and he made me. Now take a look at your hands and I want you to say, God made me, say it real quick, God made me because he did. And we learned that there is no limit to God's creativity. Let me say that again. There's no limit to God's creativity because there really isn't. And so today we are learning that God created you so that you could be creative. And we're gonna learn all about that with a guy named Paul. Can you guys say Paul? Now, if you guys remember, in June and July, we talked about this guy named Paul. Now, Paul was not a Jesus follower at first. He actually hurt people who decided to follow Jesus. He was not a good guy. But the amazing thing is that God changed his life. He turned his life upside down and he became a Team Jesus follower participant. He devoted his whole life to sharing the good news. Can you guys believe that? This guy who was a bully to people who believed in God, he said, no way, Jose. God is not real. And he devoted his life to sharing the good news. And because of that, we have this book called Ephesians. Can you guys say that? Ephesians. Now, when he was out doing this, he actually started a church in a city called Ephesus. That's a pretty cool word, right? And so Paul started this church and later, several years later, he went back to this church and he stayed there for a couple of years. And what had, what was really cool about this was that all the people that were there, 
They were all from different backgrounds. They were all very different. But the one thing that they had in common was that they believed in Jesus and that they devoted their life to being a Jesus follower. Now, because of this, because of the churches that he was starting, because of everything that he was doing to be on Team Jesus, People did not like that. The Roman government did not like that. And so he was actually sentenced to be in prison and he spent some of his life in jail. He ended up in jail for believing in God. Can you guys believe that? And so while he was in jail, while he was pretty much on this thing called house arrest, people were still able to come to his house, but he was in jail. He wrote these letters to the Ephesians. And because of that, we are able to have this book called Ephesians. I am so excited that we are gonna be in Ephesians today. And so that's just a little bit of a background on Ephesians. Now, listen to the words that Paul said in Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. Here we go. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. And now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. You see, God created us in his image. Do you understand that? He created us in his, in his image to be like him. That's why he had to send his one and only son. God had to send his one and only son, Jesus, so that we could have a relationship with him because he wants us to show the world around us what God is like, who God is like, what God represents and what he stands for. And because of this, he gave us the ability to be creative too. Now, I have a couple of ideas for you. Are you artistic? Okay, who, who here is good at art? You're good at drawing, you're good at writing. What about building blocks? Are you good at building Legos and building building blocks and all of this? You create something out of absolutely nothing. What about for all of my friends who are really good at spelling or maybe really good at history? To be good at all of that, it, cre it takes a creative mind because we all have creativity in our hearts. If you're good at anything, that means that God gave you that gift of creativity to make a difference even when you don't think that things can make a big difference when it's just building Legos or drawing something or writing something or being able to kick a soccer ball really, really well. So we know that God created us to be creative, but why? Why did God create us to be creative? Was it because he was bored? Was it because he just did it for funsies? He was just like, oh, I'll just do this. Or was it because he had a special plan and a special purpose for us? Here it is. I'm gonna read the first part one more time. It says, we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Okay, so God created us long ago and we belong to him. Everyone say, we belong to him. That is so true. Jesus gave up his life so that we could have a relationship with him. And because of that, we belong to Christ Jesus. That is so amazing to know that we are a part of his family. And it's our relationship with God that helps us to see that there are needs around us. And our job is to go ahead and meet those needs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and read the second part. It says, now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared the work, these works for us to do. So where does our creativity fit in? Do you guys get it? It says that once we see that there are people in need, that there are things that need our help, we can use our creativity to find ways to help, to do those good works. Now, I don't know about you, but I love doing good works. I know and I believe that God gave me a special gift so that I can go out and I can try and show people who Jesus is through my actions, through my words, through the way I speak to people and with how I treat people. So I want you guys to think about, think about what you are creative at. I'm gonna go ahead and give you some ideas. Are you really good at basketball? 
It, cre- it takes a creative person to be able to dribble a ball and to do offense and to play defense, to even score a three-pointer. Are you good at listening to people? Maybe you're a good talker. Maybe you're really good at writing words down. You're good at storytelling. Now, who here is really good at making people laugh? Okay. Who here is good at engineering things? You're really good at building things. You have this idea. And because of all of these ways that you are good at doing things, that is called creativity. Yes, it is. You might think that it's not, but it really is. Who here is good at cooking? It takes a creative person to cook. Okay, what about babysitting? You're really good with babies. You're really good with little kids. It takes a creative person to do that. And because of all of this creativity that God gave us, we are able to do it. It says to do the good works because God prepared these works for us to do. God knows what you are creative at. He gave me certain things that I'm creative at that other people aren't creative at. And so I want you to think, What ways are you creative and how can you use that for God's glory? Let me give you an example. If maybe you have a friend who's really sad or a family member who's really sad, you can use your sense of humor to brighten their day. You can use your gift of writing or drawing or painting to put a smile on their face and to write a card. Maybe you notice that one of your family members or even your parents are really tired because they have a baby. Well, maybe you can hang out with that baby and help them and play with them so that your parents can get some rest. Maybe you're really good at spelling or even math. Now, I am not good at math. God did not give me that creativity. And you can help your siblings or your friends do good on their homework or on their test or maybe on their spelling bees, whatever it is, we can use all of these amazing gifts that God gave us to do good works. Now, if you think that you're not creative at anything, you are wrong. But I want to encourage you to talk to your parents and ask your parents, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt or uncle, what am I creative about? What makes me creative? Because I bet you they notice a lot of things that are creative about you that maybe you didn't even notice about yourself. But also you can pray to God. You can pray to God and you can ask God to help make those things clear to you. Think about those things that you really like to do, the things that just come natural to you. I have friends who can just pick up any instrument and they are great at singing, they're great at playing instruments, but I am not good at that. Think about those things that come easy to you. That is a gift from God because that is God's creativity. Ask your parents how you are creative. And then I want to challenge you all to be creative and use those good works for God's goodness. Now that is where our bottom line comes in. It's that God created you so you can be creative. I'm gonna say it again. God created you so that you can be creative. God wants us to use our creativity for his good. I want you to to know and remember that God never wastes anything. What I'm creative at, God wants me to use that. He wants us to, to see when we see a need, he wants us to meet that need. Now I'm gonna say this one more time. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. And now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. God made you in a unique and in an amazing way. And he wants you to do something with that creativity so that you can help meet the needs of those around you. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for creating us. We know that you are a creative Father, and we know that you have given us different ways to be creative in our life. We know that some people are good at cooking. 
Some people are good in school. Some people are really good at sports. Maybe they're really good at instruments. God, whatever it is that we are good at, we pray that we would remember to use our creativity for your glory. That when we're using all the things that you have given us, that it would shine your light, that people would know that we are Jesus followers. We thank you for Paul. We thank you for his very wise words to the Ephesians because now we know that we can use these good works and that everything that you have given us is unique and amazing. God, thank you for today. In your name, we all say amen. Well, now thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we're gonna be on week three of our theme, indescribable. Now, if you remember, I want you guys to learn all about your creativity because there is no limit to God's creativity and God created us and that means we are creative. We will go ahead and see you next week and I hope to see you guys on Zoom this week. Goodbye, everybody.